The bees are always under threat, so when you see a healthy hive, it's all that much more rewarding. The bees have varroa mites, they have tracheal mites, and these are all basically parasites that weaken the hives and can subsequently kill off an entire bee colony. And then recently, within the last few years, there's the colony collapse disorder that has come around and entire hives have potentially disappeared or died off in very short amount of t in a very short amount of time. Really what humans do is they interrupt the cycle that the bees go through. And in recent cases, we've introduced new diseases by bringing other bees over from Australia in this case and introducing new viruses. Uh, and so now, you know, we're almost responsible for being stewards of the bees and ensuring that they get the medications to allow them to survive. You know, now we're, we're actually looking at a point in which uh, the bee may not be capable of surviving. There are times when um, I've opened up the hives and I've seen amazing amounts of honey in there. And what's amazing is when you actually pull out a frame of bees, especially down in the brood chamber where the queen lays all the eggs, you can see the larvae, you can see the egg go from an egg to a pupae to a larvae and then eventually get capped off. And I've also seen the bees hatch from a particular cell. Seeing the bees, the young bees, eat their way out of the cells, the wax cappings, is really neat. So you're seeing basically the cycle of life and you can also see the queen lay eggs. So during those times, I think it's, um, it's pretty amazing that you can see that with your own eye. It's also a very sensual uh, experience. You have the smells, you have the buzzing of bees, you have the bees crawling over you if you don't wear gloves. I think uh, through beekeeping, I've become closer to insects in general and, and other living creatures. Um, I think through those years, you have to have some sort of um, compassionate connection with the bees. Swimming as a child, you know, holding water in your hand and having bees come up and drink out of your hand. You know, and I've had bees crawl around on my hands without getting stung for, you know, the better part of a minute, being able to sit and just look at it. And, you know, that's, that's an amazing experience. So the thing that's unique about the physiology of the honeybee is that the honeybee will go and capture pollen from the same flower every time that it goes out. And that's unique to the honeybee because of the purpose of what they're doing. When that bee comes back to the hive, what they do is they do their little wiggle dance and they direct the other bees to that same area. In fact, they are one of the biggest pollinators here in the United States and in the world. Um, there's over 20,000 species of bees alone and all these various bees are, act as pollinators and help um, the crops cross-pollinate and produce. Since this modern hive was designed the beehive can be managed in a way where you can extract honey from the hive without killing the bees. And so I think that's been a major a step in, the positive direct, in a positive direction with uh, beekeeping. Recently, within the last um, 10, 15 years, with the varroa mite and with the colony collapse disorder, um, if it weren't for the beekeepers treating the bees with certain um, treatments, the bees would die. And in fact, a lot of feral colonies, the natural colonies that you'd used to see in you know, old tree stumps or an old tire or whatever, a lot of those hives have died as a result of not having um, the proper treatment. For commercial production, there's a lot of involvement and you know, farmers actually need, need the bees. But why a farmer doesn't keep bees himself is sort of 
beyond Maine, why we have to truck bees over state lines to have pollinators, you know, when you could have locally grown bees producing locally grown honey with locally grown pollens. It's just sort of one of those things where we have life out of balance. There's a lot of instances in which you can look at man's behavior you know, and at man's actions, and there's a direct correlation that's been very negative for the bees. And in being negative for the bees, you know, in part because we don't necessarily think about what the consequences were if just the honeybee were gone, um, there's always that doomsday potential for, you know, all of a sudden we have to hire people to pollinate plants because we killed the animal that did it most efficiently. So in terms of the symbiotic part between bee and man, uh, bees don't need man. But if you took away the honeybee, or if you took away uh, some, you know, some other of the animals, mankind's life becomes completely disabled. There's a lot to be appreciative of in things that can be taken for granted. And it's just learning about how things work and learning about the bee that lets you know not only the complexities behind it, but sort of the simplicity of what a bee does. Knowing sort of the whole macro impact and world that these bees live in and what they're capable of and how they've evolved over time, it's just a real deep-seated appreciation for what they are and, and how they do what they do.